Whiskey, real life liquid gold. It can be smoky with notes of caramel, vanilla, boiled cabbage, sweaty feet, and dare I say, smooth. Don't say that word! But surely these tasty notes can't be real. So it's time to pull back the curtain of every whiskey reviewer and give you the truth. Are we actually tasting and smelling these notes? Or are we just faking it because it sounds fancy? Quite well. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Jeff Whiskey, the whiskey slapper celebrating the joy of whiskey. And if this sounds good, slap subscribe. But for now, let's crack on. Jeff Whiskey. We've all seen them from the ludicrous tasting notes to nearly every bottle saying hints of oak and vanilla. Even outside of whiskey with wine, cognac and other spirits, they all have their outlandish tasting notes. Kind of like a medicine cupboard when you open it. Burnt knickers. School lavatories. Smoke fish. Ancient woodlands. Rugged mountains. Dark, salted chocolate. Sweaty workmen in tar. I can even smell the seagulls on pigs. I remember seeing a wine sommelier on some like daytime TV show and he was throwing out all these phrases like wet stones and you can taste the harvest times. And I was just thinking, jog on to you. It's a it's a wazzy, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not fucking real. <laughs> and now here I am waxing lyrical and saying ludicrous things like burnt bacon and brie and a jam donuts at a tire fire. So this is only my views and take on it. Let me know your onions down low. But for me, the question is, are my tasting notes completely fabricated? No, but there is a big caveat and there is lots of factors involved as well as a possible bit of embellishment at times. So while tasting notes are more prevalent for some reviewers and brands like Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, which really lean into the kind of slightly pompous, outrageous, wild tasting notes, which in truth I love and just adds to the brilliant ridiculousness that is wonderful whiskey. And I'm not saying that whiskey tasting notes are complete nonsense, but let's be real for a second, they can be slightly overdramatic and highly influenced. Your environment, your glass, what you had for tea that night are all factors and what you can and can't taste. Then of course, there is marketing. Marketing, super, super, fabulous. It just plays a massive role in what we think we taste. In fact, some studies have shown that simply reading tasting notes beforehand can make you expect those exact flavors. You read honey and citrus and suddenly you can practically smell a beehive with a side of lemon zest. But the best part is, I can taste these stupid wild tasting notes. Can you smell it? Yes, I can smell it. In my head, I can smell strawberry tarts. I can smell banoffee pie and boxes of melted raisins. And with other bottles like the Campbelltown Lock release, I instantly get the aroma of a bus depot in the countryside. And that is from my own memories and experiences and how my senses have been trained over the years, even before I went down this whiskey rabbit hole. And that's what it all comes down to. If you're struggling to find the notes people are shouting out at tastings, it all just takes time and it's something that can be actively trained. I don't think it's a natural gift or predisposition for like tasting wines, whiskies, any other spirits, burgers. And I'm sure there are some factors that may help people like I know I can smell a lot more out of one nostril than the other. And if only there was a way to hear whiskey, I'd be all ears. I have the eyes of a hawk and the ears of a fox. And if you've watched on this far and want to improve your whiskey analytic game, here are some of the tips from my experiences. Again, I'm an enthusiast, not an expert. I'm sure there's loads of other better tips out there. But for me, the biggest thing is to sniff and taste with intention. Growing up, I've always been a food lover from the smell of stuffing balls being made to the almost lemony hint in Heinz brand sweet chili sauce. I often, mostly unsubconsciously, would make a, like a mental note of the aromas and flavors. Like with this turntable, Bittersweet Symphony, I instantly get the taste and what I remember of melted raisins that have been like in a hot car for too long, which who knew that experience years ago would help me today. What? You start down the dark path forever will it dominate your destiny and then when i started getting really into whiskey i would pretty much sniff everything in the kitchen like a dog on the hunt cinnamon sticks coffee gravy granules it was a wild time also try as much food as you can and even if it's not food don't be afraid but do be smart about it you know from my budget videos, I love a bargain as well as making easy money. As a kid, I was dead and sometimes pay to eat some ridiculous things like cornflakes with ketchup, 
the wax from a baby bell and all sorts of strange stuff. I guess I had a pretty normal childhood. With little did I know it would help me down the line with whiskey. Don't eat wax. Yes, you. I know you're thinking about it. No, don't eat the wax. He's as mad as a wax banana. Maybe after a year of being more of a whiskey fan, I started to find that my brain would make connections to these memories and flavour concepts. And it was the Glenlivet 15 where the notes of hazelnut were just so prominent. I remember thinking like all night, like, yeah, I've made it. I'm a pro. For the record, far from a pro. There are people out there tasting and nosing so much more amazing notes than me. And that's fine. I know when I throw some like really dark flavour notes out there, I can sense the looks from people. What are you talking about, you fool? And again, completely fine. It's all super subjective. I also find, and it could be that as a designer, I just stare at colours all day, or it is synesthesia, but I often will smell or taste colours. Like often I'll taste purple and it's all strange. And again, that's fine. In fact, it's great that we're all different with tasting notes because it gives a much wider exploration than the notes that are just on the label or the box. And with the notes provided by the distilleries, by the brands, can be a great guide, a brilliant starting point. Whiskey tasting is fully subjective. There is no wrong answers. Someone could get cherries while someone else could have, I don't know, mung beans. Sprout mung beans on a damp paper towel in my desk drawer. Very nutritious, but they smell like death. And you can also reference like whiskey wheels or flavour maps like the one I've got above me. Though on that it does include mouse, like the animal mouse, so... Pinch of salt. So it is just important that you go with your gut as tastes and smells are just personally attached to your experiences and memories. Just focus on the joy of whiskey and enjoy it. And if you find yourself at a tasting, struggling to pick anything out, just say toffee and caramel. It's like a catch all. Works every time, even the skeptics. <laughs> so whether we're really tasting these real notes or just faking it, I'll leave that up to you. Big thanks to my channel members the Bottle Slap Club who support me in my videos. Giving a shout out to Jimmy Jazz, Whiskey Liberation Front, Becky H and you Mojo and all of you for watching. And with that, grateful to have you here and cheers to the next one. <laughs>